to you? Hi, uh, my name is Billy Simani, otherwise known as Crazy Nairobian. Okay, for me, I was, I think, the first guy to be abducted. So for me, it was more of a surprise. We had just come from a successful Thursday Mandamano. So on Friday, I was still asleep throughout the day. I just woke up constantly to tweet and go back to sleep. So at 3 p.m., I think it was on 21st June, I had a knock on the door. At first, I thought it was the caretaker because that's the only person that can knock at my door. So I went to open the door. <laughs> <laughs> so I was still in my t-shirt and my short. I went to the door, opened it, and I saw it was four guys in balaclava. The fifth one was a lady because she had on a, a face mask. And the first question they asked me was, Billy? And out of shock, I answered, yes. Na yota imiyoto meshkili amlango. So they all rushed in. The first guy ran to the balcony. I think they thought that maybe I'll escape. Mm -hmm. Then the second one went to the bedroom. And then the third one, it was this huge guy. He told me to face the wall. I love who they told me to sit down. And the next thing I know, I was being slapped with brand new wrist, wrist bracelets. Yani pingu, nyuma. Lafu. The other guy went from my laptop and my phone. And then they started interrogating me. First, they asked me to open my phone. They wanted me to unlock my phone, but I refused. And then the whole time I was asking, nimefanya nini? Nataka nijue nimefanya nini? And they silenced me with a few round of claps, all of them. Oh, wow. Uh, <clears throat> and so Nika realized this is not usual, because first of all, I was just tweeting normally. I hadn't done anything wrong. And then the other guy went for my T-shirt, the Mandamano T-shirt, it was on my chair. I thought maybe they were taking evidence, but they wanted to use the T-shirt to cover me up. So the whole time I was pleading with them to at least let me put on some pair of trousers, but they refused. And then they asked me the last time, tufungulie si mutafadhali. Uh, and I told them, ah, mi mniambie kwanza mnanishikia nini ndio nijue. They silenced me once again with a few round of clap, all of them. <laughs> and you know I live on the seventh floor. And that's the first time ever since I moved into, into that building that my teremuka stairs na, I think it was a few seconds. Because they were too quick. I couldn't see because walikuwa well, many cover up. The next thing I know, I'm being sandwiched at the ba in the back of a car. Mm -hmm. I think there was one guy on my, my, on my right, the other one on my left. And then we drove around for like two hours. So me, in my mind, I knew that I'm being taken out of Nairobi somewhere. And I knew this was it because first of all, they didn't introduce themselves. Second of all, I'm being, I've been blindfolded. So the next thing I knew, story mm -hmm. Ivo. So we drove around for like two hours, then they started whispering, and then one of them was asking for directions from someone on the phone, and then they sent him the pin. And then the next thing I know, I'm pulling up to, I don't know, uh, one of them, they, 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 they stopped the car, they came out, and then one of them was like, Niapa, and then the others were like, yeah, Niapa. Wakasema, sawa, toa hiyo jamaa tumalizane na hapa kwa kahawa, tuende kufanya kazi ingine. And I knew that was it. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I know, I'm being taken out of the car. I was still in my t-shirt, my short, barefoot, hands tied behind my back. I've been blindfolded. The next thing I know, I'm being taken down the stairs into a room. It was a very cold room. Then they told me to lie on my stomach. They asked me for, they, they asked my name. I told them Billy Simani. The next thing, they wanted my ID number. The next thing, they asked me where I come from. I think on Kwanta Kujua Ushago ni Wapi. I told them. Then they asked me, Nimeshikiwa Wapi. So I was like, I thought these were the guys that brought me here. 
So I think those were the other guys that I was handed to who were asking questions. They let me lie on that floor for like an hour. Then after an hour, somebody came. They took, they, they took me upstairs into, I think it was an interrogation room. Those guys at in interrogation room were a bit friendly. The guys at the, where I was being held up were a bit rough. So the next thing I know, I'm being sat on a chair. And then uh, one of the guys started asking me questions. They asked me the usual question, what is your name, your ID number, where do you live, your social media handles. They wanted Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. And then the next thing they told me was, uh, <clears throat> we are going to ask you questions and you are going to answer us. If you don't, first of all, this is not a police station. So they might not find you. So you have to cooperate. And I was like, this was it. So they wanted to know who was funding these protests. And I told them, no one. It's just the youth. There are people who are coming up and buying water. Some people are uh, coming up and buying T-shirts. What one are they to? Then they told me, the reason why we have brought you here is because tungeongea nawe kwako, ulikuwa kichwangumu. First of all, we need you to unlock that phone. And I was like, mimi nataka nijue ni meshikiwa nini. And they told me once more, I'm the one asking the questions. You are going to open this phone because we want to see something. And then I just decided to open the phone for them. I told them the, the code. They checked. I think they were looking to, to see if somebody was funding us and they didn't find anything. So they took me down to where I was being held. It was, I think it was a downstairs. It was a very cold room. I slept there the whole night, my hands on my back, still in my short and t-shirt the whole night. So they came for me the next day. That's when they bought in tea. And then they transferred my hands to the front. And then after tea, I was taken back to the interrogation room. And then the guy was friendly enough to ask for a blanket. And then they told me, we wanted you to first to, to meditate and think about your questions first. So I think now you are, you are ready to cooperate with us and tell us what we want to know. Perhaps, so, Billy, during the entire time, paint mm -hmm. us that experience that you've you, you, you had that entire time because you're talking of you being slapped uh, at the back, mm. you being tied up, your hands, mm. having to sleep in a cold room mm. the entire night. Mm. Just paint us in a minute mm. how that experience was for you. The whole time I was trying to think what tweet gave me out, like what did I say? Because the only thing I know I was protesting like the, the rest of my, my colleagues so I was wondering why I was brought here. And the whole entire time, I, I didn't know why I was brought there. Like, I knew this was the end for me. So it was like a psychological warfare. Because first of all, uh, they removed the, the cuffs, the handcuffs. And then they replaced them with, uh, they are called zip, zip lock mm -hmm. and zip ties. And the more I was struggling, the more they were they were tightening. So my hands were numb. I couldn't sleep the entire time. I was trying to, to like listen and, and know where I was, but there was no sound, no nothing. I didn't know if there was anybody in the room. So I, I wasn't even sure if I was in a police station or what, but I later realized the following day when they transferred the hands to the front, when I had the chance uh, and lifted my, my blinds, I was in a toilet. I was actually in a toilet. It's a very small toilet. And that's where I was held the whole night. And then they would occasionally come. And when they came, they announced that they are coming. So I had to face the wall. Then they tightened the, the blindfolds again. They take me to the interrogation room. I think by that time, people had made enough noise on social media. Mm -hmm. I was all over. I was in the news. And they were tense at that first, and, and they were telling me, uh, your friends think that we have killed you. 
they are making noise all over. So we are not here to kill you. We just try. We are, we are just trying to uh, keep the country at peace. And they told me on Thursday, the pre, the, the 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 day before they arrested me, the protest the protest was so huge, and then goons came in at around I think six seven, and they started burning uh, a few matatus. They started uh, destroying properties. So. In their mind, they thought that maybe we were sponsored by either a politician or someone. So they wanted to know who was this that was sponsoring the protest. And that's when I explained to them that ours is a peaceful protest. That's why we have even printed t-shirts and we have given out a memo that anybody who is going to appear in the protests, they wakuja kama wameva black so that we identify each other. And then they wanted to know how we were going to ensure that the protest was peaceful. And that's why I told them to go and look at my tweets. We had previously said that everybody should use their smartphone. If you see anybody vandalizing anything, take a picture, post it, so that when they try to pin the, the, the destruction on us, we at least have evidence. So they went through my tweets and they saw everything all everything that we are telling people. We had even posted how people were supposed to conduct themselves during the peaceful protest. And I think that was what helped me to, to be alive right now. Thank you so much, Billy. Mm. Ernest, karibu sana uh, to the podium. Uh, just give us a brief introduction of who you are and uh, your participation in the protest and how it impacted you. All right. Um, I'm Ernest uh, Nyerere, um, uh, a patriot. Um, a, a, a lover of our country, and I work with the president of the Law Society of Kenya. My involvement um, in the protest was largely piecemeal because I, 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 I take I take the work that we do uh, with, with the president very seriously. And it means that you have to understand the delicate balance of sharing your views and how it can affect um, the responsibility, the greater responsibility that lays on the shoulder of the person that you work with. So as a principle, I try to manage how how, how vocally I share my views. So of course, I have very strong views, and I have my own opinions of how things should work, but I understand that extrapolations are a norm in our society. So to avoid such extrapolations,